Here we go. Welcome to Control Talk Now, your Smart Buildings video cast and podcast for the week ending January 20th, 2019. This is episode 299, where we talk about all things smart controls, building controls, HVAC controls, parties, awards, fashion, and what would fashion be? Or any of those things for that matter, without your coast in mind, the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers, of the peaceful protest going on today. Kenny, tell our community about that. Well, Eric, uh, you know, this is uh, going to be a great football Sunday. Uh, it, it's been an amazing January, but uh, unfortunately, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the bench sidelines watching this playoff activity. It's going to be a hellacious game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Patriots. Uh, the Chiefs are three-point favorites. And then you got New Orleans against the uh, L.A. Rams. I'll tell you what, that's going to be a heck of a uh, football contest. L.A.'s also oh, – no, I'm sorry, New Orleans is favored by three points, uh, although they're playing uh, in L.A., right? Well, and I tell you what, New Orleans, Kenny, they are our arch rivals. And the bad part about this <laughs> is if New Orleans goes to the Super Bowl, Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, has already said whichever team comes from the NFC, the, they're redoing the locker room and their colors. So uh, it will be a bitter, bitter pill for us to swallow thinking about the black and gold being up at Flowery Branch, which is where the Falcons train. So let's just say, go Rams, go Mike Swan, go all you California folks and, and get your Rams team to win, right? All right, well, it's going to be a great game. And now, so my, my silent protest, I'm wearing my, my Steeler playoff. Uh, Stand up a little bit so we can see it. My, my lucky, my lucky uh, you know, playoff jersey here. So they're not in the playoffs. I, I can't wait. It's going to be a great game. Uh, you know, I love football. I'm a sucker for it. Uh, I, I said I wasn't going to watch it, but I know I am. And uh, the uh, that KG Brady, you know, probably the best all-around, all-time quarterback of all times, although that because uh, – a lot of controversy around the country, but uh, he certainly lived up to you know the challenges that he's been put up to. So this is going to be another challenge. It's going to be the the young stud Mahomes against the old veteran KG veteran Brady, and it's going to be one heck of a game. But he's the only guy I think in the AFC could play with the Kansas City this year. Well, I tell you what, it's going to be fun to fun fun to watch and fun to see. But buddy, we uh, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm still feeling a little long in the tooth. You and I had a very very big week last week. Uh, AHR was in town. We're going to talk about that on the show. But I, I think uh, first and foremost, we want to talk about the 2018 Control Trends Awards, which I say were a big, big success. It, uh, it was a great time. But let me, let me hear your thoughts on the Control Trends Awards, Kenny. Well, Eric, uh, it, in my opinion, too, uh, we always try to have you know the next bigger show. Every, every year we try to redo – a little bit retool, go back. Uh, but the venue made this year's uh, Control Trends Awards probably the most, um, the best awards of all time so far. So next year we've got a, a heavy load, you know, big responsibility. But uh, to beat this year, we'll have to savor this 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 success. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, probably over 100 uh, people, organizations have reached out to us saying that they had a great time at the Control Trends Awards and appreciate the, the efforts that went into it. Uh, and we thank all the staff. You know, I thank my wife and my daughter, my son-in-law, Sam, Stephanie, Rita. Thank the Stromquist folks, Michael Bonner, Stacy McCammon. Without them, I mean, all, all the work that went behind all the stuff. And so when you when it finally was over, you're right. I, I'm, I, I, I was, uh, we went right from the show to the HR show for two more days of, of you know, just walking and, and, and filming and, and doing different things. So Control Trends had a remarkable uh, 2018 awards show. Uh, we're going to review some of the great award winners, but I, I thought it was just, you know, it was, it was fun. Uh, it, we had the, you know, because there was no challenges with the audio visual, because there was no obstructions, as far as the line of sight goes, everybody seemed, you know, every seat was a good seat. So it was sold out, you know, had to, had to juggle some, some uh, late arrivals that came in and, 
But uh, other than that, it was, uh, what do you think? I thought the band jammed. I thought Roger Reed and I came out and added an additional uh, b- b- burst of energy. You know how Roger, he's so, uh, yeah. he brings yeah. things to life, you know? So, uh, well, he did. He did. And I, I thought it was great. Rob Allen did a great job helping out, as well as Jason Houck. They presented an award. Our friend Aaron Gorka, along with Ken Sinclair, presented the Young Guns Award. I thought they did an outstanding job. And, and Kenny, the, the venue was magnificent. It was in the Fox Theater, like we said, which is just uh, architecturally is a delight light it was a beautiful beautiful presentation the meal was great i understand you and i never get to eat those meals but the meal was great i understand uh the service from the fox theater was fantastic so i was really really happy about that uh riddle me one thing control trends community if you were at the, at the awards and this this happens every year uh it's just people get together and kenny they're just talking the whole time, which is kind of okay with me. And I think it's okay with you because, you know, it's the sponsors and if that's what they want out of the show, we're good with that. But uh, I, I guess the, the feedback I'd like is if, if that is a distraction, if you were at the wars and that is a distraction, uh, let me, let us know. And, and also give us an idea on how we might be able to um, calm that down a little bit. Cause it's, it's uh I can say everybody has a great time at this thing, and that's the number one thing we want is everybody to have a really, really good time. But uh, so, any thoughts on that? We'd appreciate. Well, there's uh, two things. Uh, one, one was suggested is that uh, at the very end there, when there was a toast, that that sound of hitting a uh, the spoon against the uh, champagne glass, that that significant noise always catches people's attention. So we're gonna we're gonna feed that into the uh, AV. Whenever we want to get people's attention, we'll, we'll we'll have Michael Bonner cue that in. And then also we'll have a roving microphone. So that we'll go out there with a microphone and, and address folks that, that um, might want to share something. No, I'm kidding. You know what, Eric? No, it was, no, uh, no, you know what could be a really cool thing in all seriousness with the roving microphone? In Orlando, I think it's set up for that. Our, our venue in Orlando, uh, we, we did roving stuff last year. But what might be really cool is to periodically wander out in the audience with one of the ballots and, and have one of our talkers out there say, hey uh, – let me think of somebody. Let's just say it's Roger Rebenak out there talking. We sit down next to Roger and go, Roger, looks like you got a lot to say. How about presenting the next award and let him read the nominees and open the envelope? We'll figure something out. But, but I'm going to make a note of that. I like that. That's, yeah, that's a good idea. But if it's not a problem for the community and most important for the sponsors, then you know we're kind of okay with it because I think it's still spectacular. And and uh, But I agree with you. The band was fantastic. The comic was good. And, and I think that was part of it. I mean, nobody could hear the comic. Just like in Vegas, nobody could really see the mag- magician or hear the magician. But uh, he kind of, it is what it is. It is a celebration and it is an acknowledgement of the great in our ind- greats in our industry. And I think that mission was accomplished. Right. And then we had the additional uh, you know, awards and, you know, the, the Hall of Fame was an amazing event. Uh, you know, the inductees uh, with Jim Young from Realcom, Ibicon, uh, just founder and, and uh, you know, he's just, just an incredible, uh, you know, industry leader. And it's so amazing about our industry is that we, we start out primarily in HVAC and, and, and we're into, uh, and, and, and different routes. Uh, we, we intersect with different industries now and we realize the importance of these industries and the impact they make, uh, you know, and, and how the industry is evolving. And, uh, so it's great to see that Jim Young, uh, got some real good, you know, positive attention and uh then we had newcomer boyd consulting engineers mckinney's the contractor and and of course uh thanks strongquist so i mean that was just that was the highlight i mean it couldn't have been a better ending on that i think it really truly captured you know some of the things we're trying to do and that is put people's uh, you know some of the incredible things people have done in their lifetime recognize that honor them and then put them somewhere uh that they're going to be part of a digital uh you know capture that that will be gone. You'll be here long after we're gone, you know? So that, that's the kind of stuff that really, I think we wanted to do. It was harder to put our finger on it, but now we're starting to see how it actually manifests itself in this digital uh, world and how it can put a website can, can do things that, you know, used to only be done in the physical world. So, and I think that leads on to some of the things that we we're going to cover in the show too, because uh, let me, let me come transition. Up, look, yeah. But before we transition, let me comment a, a minute about that, because I really think, you know, and, and I discovered this actually we're up on stage talking at the control trends and it just dawned on me that part of what you and I, Kenny, are, are we're historians and we're recording the history of our industry and in, in some really great formats between your great writing and the videos we do and even these shows. 
and the Control Trends Award. So part of that, uh, we, we are building another uh, a shrine, if you will, uh, an archive, if you will, but a separate website. Uh, we've started it. It's called the Control Trends, controltrendsawards.com. We're still building it. If you go there, you can see we, we pretty much have uh, the first show, all the, the media up on the first show. But but the purpose of that is just have one place you can go. And, and this will eventually probably be uh, what we'll, we'll use to uh, fill the museum, the Control Trends Museum, when we get to to, to that phase. But uh, what we're envisioning it is media collateral from every single show we do. Uh, you can find all that stuff on control trends now, but it's just, you have to do a lot of searching. And then Kenny is also going to be writing um, like a chronological order. So like, for example, if you want to see the winners of best tech to support are, he'll start back with the first show and every show he'll add to that category. So you can just click on that. You'll be able to see, all the winners with their bios, same thing with the company, same things with all the awards, same thing with the Hall of Fame. Plus, you'll be able to see all the video footage that we capture and all the, the visual media as well. So that is uh, going to be, well, it'll probably take us a couple months to get that populated, and then we'll just keep adding to it every year. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so the uh, making the comments that the industry uh, keeps evolving and, and whatever, uh, if you look back at the very first one, 2012, 2013, the year 2013, but it was 2012, you remember we're always honoring the year that's gone by in the new year. So um, it gets a little confusing sometimes, but uh, so uh, it's remarkable. And then we can actually see the aging that <laughs> I think you and I have gone through. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. I think we've done okay. Uh, you know, but, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but the industry greats are amazing. I mean, uh, so that um, it, it really is a, uh, I love doing it. So if I have to say that, you know, we work these things out, you know, after work, before work, Saturdays and Sundays, you know, and what has that meant? You know, we're going to be coming up on our 300th episode next and, week. And it's a, that's exciting. But think about that. You and I have sat down here and, and, and presented this, 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 this control trends or control talk now 300, uh, you know, episodes. So I it just, it, I like that stuff, and I and, and but I'm so impressed with the industry. I'm so impressed with the people that won. Uh, you know, some of the things that we could do here and just you know spend some time is to review some of the winners. Of course, they're all on the Control Trends Awards. It's been heavily hit. Uh, you know, thousands of people have visited, and and so we know uh, we got that real good feeling this year. I think that the Control Trends are are you know in the center spot of a lot of people's interests, and not just in North America. You know, again, we had participation and winners. For, uh, yeah, well, uh, we had a, a winner from Poland that, uh, you know, and they we met these people. No wonder. They're dynamic. They're young. They're young upstart uh, people. You know, they believe in what they're doing, and they, uh, they, they they think they've got a product that can compete with anybody's product, and, and uh, they've got the uh, engineering and, and the uh, applications to prove it. So, uh, yeah, we're very impressed with, uh, you know, the the people that are professionals around the world. I think, you know, we always talk about our common denominator being HVAC, being moving air and water through buildings, you know, comfort now, uh, analytics now, data, you know, how everybody's basically going after the same quest and, and using different, uh, you know, avenues to get there. But ultimately it's all about, you know, making, uh, you know, and, and the Martin uh, Villeneuve uh, told us, you know, again, at the Ken St. Clair's thing, over 90% of the time of our lives, we're inside of a building. So think about that. You know, we all talk about the great outdoors and we relish and revere the, the, the opportunities to go to a beach or skiing or whatever, uh, you know, you like to do outside, ride bikes, you know, Ken St. Clair up and down the hills. He's a off-road uh, bicycle, you know, cyclist, you know, uh, but think about it. We spend over 90% of our lives are inside of a building. So we all have a tendency to do that at our houses, you know, and it makes sense, you know, and, and, and we want to have the most modern connected, you know, uh, relationship we can with a, the garage door, the equipment that we have in our house, our thermostats. This transcends into our professional lives, into the buildings that we occupy professionally, uh, that we pay rent on, that we lease. And now we're finally seeing some of those incredible intersections that Jim Young used to talk about, you know, the intersection of technology, the smart connected building. And, and we're seeing these, these incredible technologies being deployed that achieve it. Now it's what scale. The race to the small space that we pursued what was about seven years ago. We came up with the race to the small space. The only thing that we lost our, our thread on was our uh, 
our, our light litter. We never, we never really conquered that, but we'll have to come back. 19, 2019. Well, explain, to, be, explain to people what light litter is. They might not remember, but it was something that Kenny and I got on early on. Well, you know, when you drive through uh, any of the cities, even Atlanta, as, 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 Modern as it was, I was pointing out light litter to everybody because to me, uh, it's like watching a fire hydrant you know that's knocked open and it's pouring water gushing under the street. Or uh, if you have uh, you know, God forbid, a fire, you know, you know, people hit the fire alarms. If lights are left on all day and night, and and you know, and it's just an extraordinary expense that's for no reason. It's a litter. It's it's a right. form of wasted energy, and we've got to get a handle on it. And, you know, uh, well, being we, in the business. Did a study once, Kenny, was what, $2 billion a year in wasted money? Or something. Oh, it, it was extraordinary. It was closer, I think, to seven. But, uh, you know. but, but so, so just essentially, we all see it is when you're driving down the road and you see the lights on in broad daylight. And, you know, unfortunately, Kenny, I think the biggest offender that, that I saw was government facilities. Yes, yes. Were, yeah. you know, Street lights. Just, just to recap a little history, back in the day, Kenny and I were, had this vision of uh, take, we would take, we had a light litter website. We called it the Green Marines is what we called it. You could join the Green Marines. And we took pictures of light litter. And if it was like a BP station or somebody, we'd take a picture and then we'd send it to their environmental people or their corporate people or put it up on Facebook and try to shame them. And the thought process was being that we could be a connector there, right? Because typically it's just the photo sensor or something is out of calibration. So we thought we could connect these people that had these problems who were wasting money, probably unbeknownst to them, with some of our uh, service contractors and people like that. And, I, you know, I don't think it's a dead idea. You know, well, no, but the, the BP, to their credit, did respond back and they said did. that a lot of those lights had to be left on because they had Security. concerns. Well, they had yeah. concerns about the uh, their, their islands; they're, they're completely enclosed, and so that they need more light because they block out the sun. Uh, their 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 canopies are so large. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. But yep, yeah, so the. Um, and, the industry. And, I, and I've been tweeting Twins. Donald Trump ever since, asking him if he's ever going to stop light litter. And he just, he said I was doing fake news. So I got to think back, stop doing fake news. But it's not fake, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> we better, we better pump, uh, right away there and go over to the football pump side of things. Well, them. you know, that's just some heated debates going on. And, and you know, that's that's another channel, another another news station. But it's interesting. And it, it's good to see how it's going to work out. But boy, I sure feel bad for those people. Uh, going all this time without paychecks. My goodness. I was in the military nine years without a paycheck. It's just, it's no fun, you know? Yeah. But we never had that problem when I was in the military. Um, so the reason I was coming up with some of these off-the-wall comments is that the changing trends that we've seen from 2012 to 2019 now have been extraordinary. How we've gone through the things with dashboards and graphics and how we went through energy and analytics and, and how... You know now data took took the lead, and cybersecurity still remains in the top top uh, you know top three or four trends of the year. So it's like uh, I always like the thing like Time Magazine. You know they always had like the man or woman of the year was based on how many times they showed up on the front cover, and we did that with that's sort of a theme thematic approach towards trends in our industry. You know what was going on. You know, and then we had the great support. Then we had master systems integrators. You know, then we had the you know basically technical support is so critical. So I mean. These these uh, categories have emerged to be global in scope. You know, there's companies that uh, provide products around the world, and it's very difficult to get uh, you know to achieve competent technical support. And to see these people provide that is extraordinary. The smart thermostat, the smart control of the year, how that's gone from just you know the Nest versus Ecobe versus Lyric to incredible presentations of smart room controllers that uh, you know. Total room automation from Siemens, you know, uh, Distech has an incredible product line so that they're integrating everything, you know, they're integrating shade control, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ability to integrate your HVAC into your ambient uh, conditions, which lighting provides, you know, lighting sword from, uh, you know, an oblique thing that we we're talking about, light litter to maybe the central theme uh, for control trends for two years, the last two years. And that is that the, there's such an option or an opportunity there for savings. Of course, that's, you know, one of the cardinal expenses in any commercial building is lights, but how uh, the metrics have evolved that people can now say without certain that control of your lights is critical. So, Schools, for instance, have an eight lighting scenario so that they start lights out this way in the morning, right before lunch, after lunch, after recess, whatever, you know, so that they can actually uh, 
manage uh, some emotional impacts that you know you know that the, the kids can be more attentive because the light serves them better to uh, you know the, our circadian rhythms where we're seeing uh, you know people heal faster all the way to Ken St. Clair's thing with the emotions, you know, the building emotions now. So we're, we're finding. Well, no, yeah, no, I, I think I'm sorry to hop in here, but, but, but I, th- I think the big trend there, and this is when we started tracking before and we're really seeing it come to fruition. Uh, one metric is a three thirty three hundred dollars mm-hmm. rule. And basically they're saying that uh, you spend $3 per square foot, roughly depending on even California might be eight uh, on energy. You know, you spend $30 to build the space per square foot roughly and put everything in it. And then, $300 per square foot per employee. So if you can effectuate and have people be more productive, and the point Kenny is making is that lighting, probably more so than anything else, just because of the psychological effects on it uh, can have, and they've proven studies, increases the productivity of the people in the space. Plus it makes it more aesthetic. And, and I think as we went to some of these breakout sessions, and we've been saying this for a while, Kenny, is that the real estate business is getting competitive for a number of reasons. Number one, more, more and more people are working from home. The millennials, if you're trying to hire them, you better have a space they want to work in or you're going to lose out to somebody who does. So the whole environment has become key in many, many ways, not just saving energy. That used to be the driver before, and that still is a minor driver, but having to be more productive and having the space be more humanistic, as Ken Sinclair might say. Sure. And then, I mean, imagine, uh, so So, you know, just to, to stay on the thread of, of, of how we're watching our trends change and evolve and, and lighting going from light litter, and we kind of forgot about it, to, to lighting and having the metrics to prove that's critical. And it, and now we're seeing products designed to integrate the lighting of, a, of the small space, the office, with the shading, with the blind control. Is a better choice to take the outside lighting that we're being you know given to on a 12, 12 p.m. Uh, on a Monday is it cheaper to get outside lighting and turn the lights off or is it going to bring on the air condition because of the heat gain from the, you know, so all these things are being put into artificial intelligence, letting this algorithm decide what is the best optimal use of energy. But then we were talking so much that the first stage of heating and cooling is going to be a light change. So we saw I'm applications like Comfy, yeah. Yeah. right? So Comfy says, you know, I'm cold. I want some heat. Boom. Uh, the light's, change an uh, orangish reddish tint uh, or something i'm not quite so sure exactly the, the lights become warmer versus cooler which has a psychological effect of right immediate yeah. so the person thinks that they just con- connected to this used to be distant mechanical equipment that was located on the roof or in the, in the basement somewhere some kind of mechanical room the detachment the thermostat was considered the placebic, you know, a thing and, and now you see like you said the millennials driving they don't want to get up and adjust the thermostat well, why should they? I mean, they're sitting here trying to jam here and get something done on the, at their workstation. They want to be able to hit an up arrow, down arrow, you know, right. or, or, or be able to just say it. I think we're really seeing, Kenny, the personalization yep. of technology. Oh, I mean, my kids, Evie and Axel, five, uh, six and three, I mean, they talk to Alexa all day long. Most right. of the time they just say Alexa fart and Alexa farts for them. But what I'm saying is it's sort of that whole, the whole uh, personalization of technology. And Ken Sinclair, again, to his credit, automatedbuildings.com has been sort of talking about the interface is going to, you know, be voice versus pressing up or down arrow key. And now he's even saying that it might just be camera. The camera might look at you and, and be able to read your face or see if you're flush or, or whatever, and then adjust the temperature automatically. But, but I think we're tr- seeing true automation and true personalization and, you know, it's just a matter before you and I are going to have a robot wife or something, you know, who knows? Now, now, <laughs> listen, I think it's so cool because, I mean, what we did there is we kind of just scanned through, uh, you know, uh, again, 2012, the categories were this, 2018, the categories are this, and we have yet to look to 2019, these incredible new innovations. We got to walk the AHR show and see some of this technology. So we see the emergence of an IoT controller versus a HVAC. You know, we, we have still have our VAV controllers, our plant controllers, but we're seeing stuff happen that make our innovative wireless products or solutions of the year. You know, uh, a reality that there's going to be 
some genius somewhere or some company, some emergent technology is going to come in and it's going to change again the HVAC industry. So it's just, it's a marvelous process. We saw some great uh, small companies. We see some Australian companies. We see, we see participation from around the world. So thank you to all the Control Trends community that participated with participation in, from 57 countries. Wow. I think wow, one year we had you. 61. So, I mean, we didn't really lose ground. I think we just, you know, but it's just, it's a worldwide thing. So we're, we're very happy and we have to be, uh, you know, sensitive to that, that there's, you know, a bigger reach and, and it's great for companies uh, that are trying to come to North America. You know, we, we, we love to serve as that pivot point. And also for companies in America that are making their way into other markets around the world, we're seeing, uh, you know, uh, we're seeing the change. We're seeing the evolution, like in the Middle East, uh, in, in areas where it used to be dominated by European uh, dominance. It used to come out of England and, and Germany, and, and everything was uh, British threads, and everything was uh, 120 volts. And, and now we're seeing uh, an emergent acceptance of, of 24 volts. In other words, why? You know, so some of the other countries, India, for instance, too, is is, is very open to. North American style, you know, acceptance of our, our, our stuff. They always have been, but I mean, it, we're seeing this interchange happen where we, we actually meet, facilitate meetings where we're seeing involvement uh, that we never saw before. The world's getting smaller, more open, more global. Oh, that is. So it's, a, it's just, it's, it's a great thing to do. So we're looking forward to an incredible 2019 and for the people, places, solutions and whatever, keep them coming. And uh, for all you marketing gurus out there, send your collateral to us. We'll post it on control trends. Yeah, I think, I think you know, one of the things we're going to be doing in 2019, Kenny, is we're going to be sort of streamlining the control trends website. We already talked about the control trends awards website. We also have the podcast control trends podcasting network. So we're encouraging, if you got a podcast that you'd like for us to, uh, to help you get out, We'll be glad to work with you on that. We can help you produce it. We can help you uh, edit it. All those things can, you know, we can help you with. So if you're interested in podcasting, which I strongly urge you to, if you're in this business, it's, it's you know, we, we go, you know, 10, 10 to 12 to one video cast versus podcasters, meaning 10 to 12 times more people listen to the podcast and watch the video cast. And every time I've start, tried to stop doing the video cast, because it's a lot of work to edit, it just, there's an outcry because people, Love looking at Kenny and seeing him talk. So that's that's that. But uh, why do you do that, man? My my favorite, one of my favorite pieces of last week, and and I just have to say this, and there's just too many people to shout out to Kenny. But this this makes it for me. I can't tell you how many sessions we went to, how many people we saw on the floor, how many people that we saw at the wards that say, "Hey, we listen to your guys' show every week. Thanks for doing it." And yeah, the, I, I, I too felt a yeah. I, well, you know, because um, it, it's, not, it's not like you're running around trying to win a popularity contest, but you can't always determine your efficacy. You can't, you don't know uh, who's doing what. That's the crazy thing about the internet. You know, people pick it up at the most unlikely places, but, um, you know, we do have the ability to track and see, the, you know, the, uh, the hits we get uh, from countries. And, and, and when people do hit it now, how they're, how they're searching the site for information, you know, there's, a, there's those minds out there that are just technically, you know, uh, inquisitive they want to know what's going on they want to know who has what and where to get stuff and and i think to ken st Clair's point again you know that that uh, thing he did uh tree sullivan helped him make that little flip chart that took the technology the last 20 years that was all on automated buildings that in itself is is, a, is an incredible dictionary of, of, of technology or, or capture maybe not dictionary maybe some sort of a wikipedia of hvac or building automation you know but uh, you know some of the predictions made by those people uh, we're, we're actually sitting in them, using them. You know, all these people that predicted uh, that we would be able to talk. Uh, you know, and now you have Alexa turning up your thermostat, and and the the concept of removing friction, anything that you can do to remove friction, is uh, you know, in the books that we read and the stuff that uh, we we teach each other about. We're trying to always keep ahead of the, you know, keep abreast of technology. But one of the things uh, that is is like uh, is to take all this technology and assume that everybody's wired, they've got a router in a house uh, and then you can make a device that connects to that router. Boom, you're on the internet uh, or you're on the web and, and then can take care of or take part in the cloud services or offer cloud service. But one of the coolest things I read was the encouragement is whatever you do, whatever's being done, whether it's washing a car, pickling uh, or, you know, uh, like canned goods, they were saying, you know, 
how you can make that process easier is to just look at something that's being done and think, how can we make this easier using this technology? So is wireless a possibility? Or is, um, is a RDF tagging possible? Is any way that you can take something that, uh, so even like uh, the movement of materials, garbage cans, you know, how they're, they're losing all the, uh, the shopping carts in, in the shopping area, you know, just remember we did the thing with the hospitals and how, how uh, Niagara had a, had an incredible, um, application where the nurses walk anywhere from seven to 10 miles every shift looking and a lot of that's looking for equipment finding it and then it's not serviceable it's not ready to go and how if you could you know just so, so any industry out there uh the, the the recommendation was look at it from a inventor standpoint and you're not necessarily inventing the technology you're applying the technology so well no and and i, th- I think you bring up a great point kenny i think you have to think beyond the technology and i think that's going to be your differentiator thinking about how to apply it and how it can make things less friction create less friction or in some cases you know, you want to create some friction. So that's the interesting thing about this whole friction. If you make it too easy, people don't like it. So there's this whole sort of technology aesthetics balance that you have to play with. It's ever changing. It's not static. It's dynamic. And and I think to do that, you have to really, really pay attention now more than ever. And I think that's part of what Kenny and I are endeavoring to do is to 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 bring the people, the 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 the, the, the soothsayers like Ken Sinclair, Jim Young, uh, Ron Zimmer, and some of these folks that we get the privilege of talking to and try to bring them out to the community so you can listen to it on this podcast or video cast and sort of stay ahead of the curve. And, and sort of along those lines, Kenny, I, I want to, again, reach out to the community and say, hey, if you're in this industry and you have something to say, the purpose of Control Trends is to be a forum for you to get your messages out there. So be it a new product, a new idea. Uh, you know, again, there's a link on the Control Trends website where you can become a guest on the show, but you're welcome. And as Kenny said to the marketing folks, send us your stuff. We'll post it. We want, you know, we want to be a hub. We want to be a curator of all these things that are going to affect your business. And, and I think early on we said control news you can use, right? So smart sure. building control news you can use that can help you be more profitable because as I've said many times in the past on this show, one of my teachers once told me, Eric, nothing is obvious to the uninformed. So I hope we're trying to be a painless way to get informed. Well, sounds good. Uh, so the uh, again, it was a, a great uh, end to 2018. Uh, it, was a, it was a great show. Uh, again, thanks to everybody, the sponsors in particular, um, the uh, to Nancy Lutz and her staff, like you said, the uh, the Fox Theater was so gracious. The the uh, the woman in charge of the uh, catering, I can't think of her name at the point. I lost her card, so I apologize because I wanted She's to write her. Great. But yeah, she took care of uh, everything we needed. So uh, and and the uh, the bar service was uh, incredible. So looking forward to another great show. So yeah. just want to want to put that to bed now. Just right. say. Yeah, Ooh. well, yeah. Thank you, thank you, and we'll see you in Orlando. And we've got, I've, I think, I got a terabyte worth of worth of videos from. And to put this in perspective, this particular video that Kenny entered in this hour shows probably about two to three gigs. Okay, but I got we got tons of media from the Control Trends Awards. We'll be posting. We got tons of media from AHR, and and I think Kenny, let's spend the, the next few minutes, and then let's wrap it up so we can go watch some football. Let's talk about the JCI, the pen controls 100 year anniversary and then let's roll into the breakout sessions today hr let's go get a beer and watch some football after that oh, i could dig that yeah well uh thank you to johnson controls and pen uh we had uh, well just a really unique experience because you know we all came uh, how were we you start in the bas uh, building automation hvac industry uh, in the warehouse minus 10 huh I was minus 10. Minus 10. I, I can actually say without hesitation, I, I was probably uh, about nine, nine or 10 yeah. because uh, I would go and have to clean the bathrooms and, and the sinks the and the chairs. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I shipped a lot of boxes in my life. And then, uh, you know, yeah. so, but pen controls uh, we had a certain part in our warehouse. And, and I remember how fast we used to sell just a ton of anything to do with pressure, began with a P, anything to do with temperature, began with an A, and the A19, ABC-24. It was there when I was 10 years old. It was there when I was 50, whatever, you know, and then uh, it was one product that would never, uh, they had no uh, sunset date put by this, this product. So in other words, it's a, it's eternal. You can need a remote temperature controller with a capillary 
and and uh, you know a non-electric switch. So, uh, but uh, Anthony L. Legaza, the general manager of Refrigeration Controls, hosted us, uh, and, and of course we met Chris Eichmann and all the other big Johnson guys, Chris Lane. But uh, it was a very, very nice presentation. Uh, there's a, a gentleman, Goss, I went to school with his father here in, in Pittsburgh. He's now uh, one of the business leaders for Johnson's refrigeration side. But he, um, the, the aquarium in Atlanta was extraordinary. So we're doing these interviews at this, this uh, 100-year birthday at Penn, and there's these mammoth fish. What, what the heck was it? Is it a whale, a killer whale? Oh, whale shark. Sure. Coming right behind you. <laughs> yeah. The first couple of times, it was like, you know, it was kind of unnerving, you know, because you wonder, is it possible? You see the movies where these things get mad or ornery and crack, you know, hit, charge the glass and break it. That was that mega thing, whatever. That movie just came out. I watched that and I was thinking, boy, would that be a bummer? You're, you're 5,000 feet under the water and, and, and your little glass capsule gets damaged by this monster uh, shark or whatever. But, um, the products, the quality, and and you know, and and the pride of this company has has lasted a hundred years, and they've got a lot of designs to go another hundred. So it's so cool when you hear this come, you know, it's, uh, the the relay, you know, like it, it reminds me of slingshot, you know, the rockets that you know go near uh, you know, the gravitational pull, and instead of being sucked into their ruin, they, they get propelled into the next galaxy, whatever. And, and that's what they're doing with their product line. So to hear people talking about that, that was a great hundred, but we're moving forward to the next hundred and having this roadmap that, that they shared with us was a, was a very unique experience. So it was, cool. well, it was and the aquarium is, is an amazing place. It's beautiful. So we got some really beautiful footage from there and some great interviews. I think the overarching theme as you will hear is they're taking these mechanical controls that have been around forever. They're making them accessible via the network. And if you look at what Johnson's done with their product portfolio, they, they kind of went from the large systems, which they've always had. Now with the Verisys, they've got the midline system, which integrates. And now with the pen products, you're going to be able to tie all those in too. So we don't want to spoil those videos. They'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. I encourage you to check them out. But it was good times with Penn and Johnson and Penn do things top, top shelf. So if you're lucky enough to be there, you had a great time. Yep. And, uh, well, we had another, um, just to, to, to pass on some news, we had some, uh, it was neat that the functional devices rib, uh, the rib relay company, uh, had two big things happen in early January. One, they celebrated their 50th anniversary, the 50th birthday party. And two, they, uh, they have got the uh, recapitalization, uh, and, and, uh, and that's always interesting. Shore Hill recapitalizes functional devices. That's some pretty big news for a lot of people because I don't think there's anybody out there that doesn't use functional devices in one way or another. So congratulations to them. Uh, how's, your, how's your legs and knees? I, I, I mean, we walked. I mean, imagine this. this here's, what, here's what's going on. Before you even get out of the car, you got to walk 0.7 miles to get to the front door of, of the place from parking to, to the HR. Then inside the HR, you got to walk another 0.5 miles just to get to the, the exhibit area. So before you said boo, you walked uh, one and a half mile or one and 1.2 miles or whatever it was. And it was great. But I'll tell you what, uh, don't do dress shoes. I made the mistake the first day wearing kind of a, not my Sunday best or anything, but I wore these shoes. <laughs> That's it. Never again. I'm wearing tennis shoes from now on. I don't care what anybody says or what well, it looks no, like. There are these things I was trying to get you to get them, Kay. They're called Nike uh, sock darts or Nike darts or something. And they're the most comfortable shoes I have. They just slip on like a pair of socks, but they've got soles on them. They are so comfortable. So uh, I've got to get you turned on to those. But but we, uh, we we walked the show, saw a lot of good good friends there. A special shout out to Luis Melgueras from uh, Neptronic. Luis, you're the man, baby. It was good to see you. Uh, all of the people, John Nichols, Delta Controls, it was great seeing you. Delta does really, really well um, in the nomination period, and I think we get John involved next year. That's going to be great. Daryl Clayson from Loy Tech, they did great. Of course, the usual staple, Honeywell, Siemens, Johnson, fantastic boost with all those folks. Uh, and uh, so it was great. But then I think the big thing, Kenny, and we we're, we're editing, we already got one posted today, is the breakout sessions. You and I went to three or four incredible breakout sessions. And one of them you just posted today that Ken Sinclair put on. So let's talk about his collective collaboratorium. Well, you know, uh, we, we, it was probably one of the fun, funnest, most entertaining dialogues I've seen in quite a while because you had 
you had CEOs, two CEOs, you know, two owner founders. You had the vice president of marketing for a major company. You had uh, an organizational representative from, uh, you know, in Ocean, and you set them up on a board. And what was really cool about it was that, uh, you know, George Thomas and, and Mark Peacock kind of held down the old wise, wizened ways. And then you had uh, the CEO from D- Destech, Martin uh, Villeneuve, and and you also had. Um, Troy uh, from an ocean. Troy, Troy Davis from an ocean, and then you had Ken Ken St. Clair in the middle, and but, Mark Peacock. Yeah, Mark Peacock uh, and George kind of you know, I mean the issues were incredible. I mean we talked about cybersecurity, we talked about data, you know the generation of data, the capture of data, data in the cloud, the the privacy issues of data collection, but also who owns the data. I mean we when we heard it from some pretty big people. There's some good sparks going there, and and how Distech has a vision of the future, the roadmap of they they're, they were already deployed this future. So while we keep talking about like it's going to come, it's going to come. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it's here. It's they're here. using the stuff, the dwell times. They're using occupancy, uh, you know, uh, monitoring and and stuff to to drive business decisions. So that the 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 number of people entering this doorway and this, and then we're going to put the, the you know how you locate and relocate products and, and exposure, uh, and and how uh, you know if people want to be accessed, and they use the beacon capability. Uh, versus George Thomas says, hey, I don't want somebody to, to put me as hostage that if I don't have an iPhone, I can't turn my heat on because you guys didn't put a thermostat on the wall and my whole thing's connected to something I might not have. How can you presume that everybody has an iPhone and, and wants to use it uh, to turn on things that you know shouldn't have to use an, a, a smart device to do? So it was some great dialogue. And then the, one of my favorite things was uh, Mark Petock said about data. Who owns that data? I mean, when when did you, be, you know, when, uh, and, and we all know it, uh, the guy from an ocean said, Troy said, hey, well, you know, if you scroll down to that 27th page, you would have saw the sentence that said, uh, yeah, anything we get here is mine and not yours for, yeah. for lifetime. And if there is an afterlife, it's still, it, it's, it's still it, mine. It, <laughs> yeah, it's still mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of some life cool. after that life is still mine. So yeah, yeah well, I, I, I mean, I, Kenny, I you mean, said it before. You know, da- a lot of people think data is the new currency. It's the new goal. So well, but I it, just your point. It was it was incredible dialogue and debate, questions, thought provoking, fascinating. And the really really good news is, if you weren't there, you can go to Control Trends or AutomatedBuildings dot com and you can see it because Kenny I, and I videoed it. Well, you did a great job, and, and uh, I know it took you seven hours uh, or, or such to, to uh, and you're not done yet, uh, edit those videos because, uh, you know, with, with it comes an expensive time. It's, it's Dude, not- I, I, I got to tell you something. I just had to buy, uh, and, and of course, it's great because with technology, this I think I'll tell this story because I think it sort of is, is the dark side of, of moving forward. So... Uh, I've got these cameras out shoot 4K video, right? So you get these beautiful pictures, okay? Guess what? I had to buy another computer this week because the one I have, it takes them forever to process the 4K video. So it's uh, it's just going to keep evolving. And now they're talking about 5K and 8K video. So I've got a computer coming in because part of the reason it took so long to, to, to do these files is the files are huge, right? You get this beautiful video, but then you have to buy a software package that compresses it down and then it has to be reformatted and rendered in such a way that then you can upload it to YouTube. Oh, baby, it, there, there, there is so much to it. It's gone so much past just shooting good video or shooting, getting good audio. But uh, the, the upside is, is it's great. I mean, I think you'll see the quality of the video. There, there were some gaps in there that I had to put some on top of it. So that doesn't look good. But overall, the quality of the video is, is some of the best we've had. But I've got three more, two more, two other sessions that we recorded that, again, it's going to take another seven or eight hours to edit them, but they'll be great, plus the Control Trends Awards. So it's, uh, yeah, I got a new computer coming, Kenny. Well, you know what? Uh, I, you, you, you want to know what my hard drive is on that new computer? No, tell me because I, I don't know how big they are. Two anymore. terabytes. I mean, I can remember when you had a 250 gig hard drive. You were doing <laughs> this is two terabytes. 
Well, you say that I, I, I went and bought a, US, a thumb drive the other day uh, because of I, you know, the stuff we're doing. And uh, I didn't realize that they had thumb drives that were 32 gig. No, I mean, yeah. is, is, I, don't, I mean, probably have bigger, but I mean, it's right off the shelf, seven, eight dollars. No, 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 it is. This is this is working in the operating I mean, system. So it's anyway, I, I, I digress. But but th this is. This is the kind of stuff that we love. Uh, Ken Sinclair, again, one of the great thinkers in our industry, but Troy, Mark P. Talk, the rest of them, great, great dialogue. And when George Thomas hears some statements and goes, uh, you guys are nuts. And then Martin Velus goes, is this a young versus old thing? <laughs> and we go well, and, then, and, then, uh, yeah, and then Troy, he, he took the hit from, uh, <laughs> he, he owned all this, the, the negative stuff about the evasion of privacy. He said, but, uh, uh, you know, George uh, uh, Thomas with the pushback, he said, you know, uh, give us your cell phone connection or your AC won't work, you know. So he said that many times technology is looking for an application. Uh, Mark Petock said, figure out just what, what you want to give away because, you know, if there's a possibility to, mitigate that you, know, you you may you may recognize that point in time but uh, but here yeah. but here's the fascinating thing about george thomas he's adopted the raspberry pi as one of his controllers he puts a top on it or a hat on it and is using raspberry pi i mean so you got this guy who's complaining about iphones but at the same time is the first guy in our industry to adopt raspberry pi and, and create that as a controller well that's because he's an open source guy he's he's right. a sedona guy he's he's yeah. a, you know he, he believes in, in uh, you know uh, George Thomas, we did some great work with him. Uh, you know, the interview with him that uh, yeah, I just will never forget it. Uh, and and the picture of him in his basement as as a you know young you know twenty year old kid or, or young man playing around with electronics. You know, and, and went all the way to start his company that's now global. You know, and, and um, his George Thomas Thomas Contemporary Controls. We've got they do one of the best backnet training series. Ever right. we have it on control trends. It's like eight parts. This guy is such an innovator. Uh, yeah, just a great guy. But but Kenny, we we had a couple others uh, that w that we we attended and recorded. One of them was with uh, Brad White on uh, open technologies, open systems, open technologies. That the room was packed. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that video because nobody walked up to the microphone to ask the questions. It was mainly younger people, and there was just. They don't raise their hands. They don't ask for permission. They just go back and forth. And I've got the camera going back and forth, trying to pick it up. So I don't know how I'm going to edit that. But well, what do you think of that session? Well, I mean, it was it was it was packed. I mean, in other words, that was the largest uh, or the most people I've ever seen inside one of those rooms ever. Uh, in other words, there were people sitting on the floor along all the wallways, and, and you and I were standing up by the camera. But um, it was it was very interesting because they had some very young, intelligent people. Uh, you know. Uh, I, I know Brad was there. The gentleman from Sweden was there. The gentleman from Contemporary Controls was there, and and they were talking. Uh, and there was an integrator there, and um, uh, there was some some interesting dialogue there between the the panel and and the crowd because the panel said, uh, just like all the un other industries, like you know w whether it's uh, digital pictures taken over for Polaroids and whatever, they believe that the uh, the, the days of the manufactured controllers are over they see uh, iot devices being taken in and then it's all about the application it's all about you know the the uh the the, the initiative of the person that needs the technology not the technology telling the people this is what you're going to use you know so but they they actually exchange some 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 you want to bet and that sort of thing too because the guy from sweden says hey you know what it's not a question of if it's a question of when and he laughed and said, everybody here that's against this, you know, is going to be, you know, going to settle in the sunset somewhere. And then they will have it, that the technology will prevail. I'm trying to just think of his name. His, uh, his name was um, Nicholas Warren. He's the CEO of Go IoT, Sensor to Cloud Solutions. He was a very, very uh, interesting person. And I thought, too, that the two people that were charging the the campaign for technology one was from sweden and one was from canada you know and yet we're here in north america and we're talking about north america market so so there was some some the overlay wasn't quite uh, flush there there was some some interesting stuff but in sweden you know they, they probably have a whole different you know or not a whole different but they have a much more progressive or because i think the gentleman didn't expect any pushback you know and, and well, so there was old timers out there that said, let me tell you something sweden is like germany i know you lived in germany for a while can you imagine what would happen if you had light litter in Germany? 
I mean, they wouldn't tolerate it. And I think Sweden's that way too. But uh, what what a cool guy he was. We'll hope we, hope we get him on the show. It's kind of funny because my uh, dad's brother's uh, widow turns 100 this year. So I mentioned to him we're probably coming over to Sweden for that. And he looks at me and goes, well, that'd be great because she can celebrate my grandmother's 103rd birthday with her. So uh, must be something living along with the Swedes. Great, great uh, session that was, Kenny. And then we had Scott Cochran's Master Systems Integrators. We didn't get a chance to record that, but uh, another fantastic job by Scott Cochran, Cochran Supply and Engineering. Uh, it, you know, we're going to be covering his Control Con. So if you go to the Cochran Engineering site, you can get the details on that. Or we'll probably post it on Control Trends too. And then the first session, uh, Ken Sinclair, Therese Sullivan, the rest, and we do have that one recorded was more that humanistic sort of high touch type thing, um, which I thought sure. was fascinating as well. Well, yeah, well, Teresa, uh, you know, she uh, she has an incredible background and uh, she's, uh, you know, very, very hip to Silicon Valley and the new, new technologies. And she now has a, uh, she is on the uh, Niagara team uh, in marketing. So she gets to see and hear a lot of what's going on and how it, it, it's going to affect our industry. So there was a great exchange uh, in that panel, uh, Actually, Ken St. Clair, he put on uh, nine uh, education sessions. It's probably, I don't know where the guy gets the energy. My goodness. Uh, and and it was, uh, it was all day. It was, um, it was B311. And, and we, <laughs> We spent some time in B three eleven ourselves. We, so, we spent, we spent but, but I think what's really cool about it is the capture on the video stuff. Uh, it's very, very worth a while. So we have that uh, posted uh, this afternoon about the uh, leading industry experts join Ken St. Clair's seventh connection community co- collaboratory co- collaboratory at the two thousand nineteen HR Expo, and we're going to help Ken change that to a a less alliterating title. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you've been to that or when you see it, if you will uh, email me and Kenny what you think it should be called, and if we pay, if he picks your name, if Ken St. Clair goes with your name and renames it on your name, you'll get two tickets to the 2019 Control Trends Awards. How about that, Kenny? <laughs> deal, deal. All right, but um, Well, the, the thing was that the, some of these things were very heavily attended and some of them weren't, and it's yeah. a shame because this one here – should have been the the crowds. Uh, that it's Ken Sinclair's really- best, and and the stuff he does is fantastic. That that should have been the one. It should have been standing room only. Right, right. Um, I, I I've just got to say it. it. Anything that Ken Sinclair does, you want to attend. And at AHR, he just puts a lot of a lot of thought, a lot of energy into this. He gets great guests. He leads great discussions, and uh, you just got to wait to Orlando next year. But in the meantime, check him out at automatedbuildings.com. And Kenny Smyers, I got to tell you, man, I'm I'm itching to go watch some football. Anything else you want to hit before we we call it a day? No, just uh, thank you for everybody again. Uh, it was a great 2018. It's uh, January's already gone. I mean, it's, time's just flying by. We're in a, we're in a whirlwind uh, movement into 2019. We have a whole lot of really interesting stuff uh, for next week already, along with the archives and and then the uh, continue to watch the Control Trends Awards because uh, the the videos are, are superb. All right. Well, listen, do me a favor. Uh, I want to, in a second, I want to ask you to give out the uh, Control Trends um, email address because I have a request of our community. As Kenny stated at the beginning, this is episode 299, which basically means next week is our 300th episode of Control Talk Now, the Smart Buildings video cast and podcast. And again, Thank you to everybody that spoke to us. Every time we go to a meeting, people from all around the world watch and listen to this show. So my request is this. If you'll take your iPhone out and just do a, a short, this is Roger Rebenack, for example, from Jackson Controls. Ken and Eric, congratulations on episode 300. If you shoot a video of it or just audio, but preferably the video, we will create a montage at the beginning of episode 300 so we can celebrate with with everybody that watches and listens to it. So again, take your smartphone out, just say your name, say congratulations on episode 300, your name and who you're with. And I'll put, I'll string all those together and that'll be the opening to next week's 300th episode. So Kenny, give them the email address they can send that to. Well, certainly it's a, it's a, it's an easy long one. Control trends, contact at gmail.com. So control trends, contact at gmail.com. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's so a it, plural it, it, trends, all one word, right? Control trends, contact, contact right. at 
gmail.com. Gmail. Cool. And you heard Eric just volunteer himself. He always wonders why he has to spend so much time. <laughs> at it. Like he just, he just, hopefully you guys keep him busy. He's going to spend three hours putting all these little montage pieces together. But it'll be cool. Remember what you said early on? I mean, you know, it's, again, 300 is, is, is just quite a, uh, it well, it's, it's, you, you remember early on we we went through phases of that was every week we had somebody introduce the show and don't you remember one year david witherspoon had the santa from honeywell had the santa claus hat, hat on and was going ho 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 welcome you're listening to control talk now the smart building is video casting podcast with ken smyers and eric strump was so i mean just some really cool stuff roger's done some terry swope one year Got his guitar out and sang an opening to us. Remember, to tell you what, the president of Link Spring sang sure us. Sure do, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, and if the whole show next week is nothing but those montages, so be it. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, it's, it was a – and, and where did we do the 200th one? I, I remember. Let's see if you remember. Johnson Controls, Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. And, and we thought 200 was crazy. Uh, so that's just a couple years ago. A few All right, years Alrighty. All right. Well, there we go. We have another week on Control Talk. Now your smart building is video cast and podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate all our listeners, all our community. So remember, be bold, stay in control, and stay relevant. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. And that's a wrap on T99.